Welcome to this edition of The Rainer Report. You know, I absolutely love being with you via video. I, I, I love writing on my blog and writing in my books, and that's just one of the passions I have through written communication. I love uh, being with you audibly through my podcast, Rainer on Leadership and Revitalize and Replant, the former with Jonathan Howe, the latter with Jonathan Howe and Mark Clifton. So I love those. And, but I got to say, I particularly love the times that I can get on this side of the camera and know that you're actually watching and that you can get to know me better. And that's, in a sense, I can feel like I'm getting to know you better. And so that's one of the reasons we do this Rainer Report is so that we can share in brevity things that are happening in culture, in the church, in church leadership. Just some brief tips, brief ideas, I think of some things that could be very positive and very exciting for you. So in this edition of the Rainer Report, I am talking about the relationship between inviting and church health. Now, to be clear, I want to define what inviting is. Inviting is a one-on-one -on -one contact where a person who is a part of a church asks another person who is obviously not, either they're not at all or they've been gone a while, to come to the church. So inviting can take place by telephone. Inviting can take place by email. Inviting can take place by social media if it is direct on and not just broadcast to everyone else. Inviting can take place obviously in, in person. That is one of the more effective ways, person to person. But there is, as we are seeing more and more of this, a direct relationship in getting your church to be an inviting church and the health of the church. So here's my first presupposition or even my thesis. And it is this, inviting churches tend to be healthier churches. Healthier churches may seem like a, a, a word that is illy defined or healthier. You know, what do you mean by healthier? What I mean is you're reaching more people in the community. What I mean is you're seeing people grow in greater maturation in Christ. You're seeing greater unity in the church. You're seeing, to put it on the negative, fewer distractions and fights and bullying and criticism in the church. When we are energized to do the positive, we have less time to do the negative. When we are focusing on reaching and inviting, we are not nearly as focused on getting things my way. When we're thinking about the other person, we're not thinking about me, myself, or I. So without a doubt, the inviting church tends to be a healthier church. Second point is really a reinforcement of how I introduced this. An invitation is most effective when it's one on one. Now to be certain, you can stand in front of a group and say, I'd like to invite you all to my church. But by definition that I am using, that is not the invitation that leads to greater church health. You can send out a tweet. Uh, I want everybody to come to my church. Okay, well, maybe one person that will be, be moved by that in some small way. But the reality of it is the most effective invitations happen is when you look someone in the eye and invite them to church. Or when you send them an email and say, hey, can you, would you like to come to my church and hear some information about it? Or even through social media, as long as it is direct one to one. So one of the things that we will say is inviting leads to a healthier church culture and an invitation is most effective when it's one-to-one. -one. As I have indicated as my third point here, in person are the most effective. But telephone and digital means such as social media, email, and so on like that, they are as effective as well. The key here is the more personal it gets, the more effective it gets, but one-on-one -on -one by any means is going to be fairly effective. So keep that in mind. You can encourage your members who may be a little more on the introverted side. Hey, you don't have to go up to someone one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, you can send them an email or you can, you, you can send them a message on Facebook or you can send them a DM on Twitter and the list goes on and on. As long as you can connect with them one-on-one, -on -one, most of these will be effective. Fourth point. The most effective churches are striving to have annual invitations equal to 10 times the average worship attendance. Now let's pause for that just a minute. The most effective churches are striving to have total annual invitations equal to 10 times the worship attendance. Let's do the math. 
And I don't want to get hung up on numbers or make this all about numbers themselves, but I do want, I'll be talking about this in just a moment when I talk about lag metrics and lead metrics. If your church attendance is 200, a healthy goal would be in the course of one year to have 2,000 invitations. So you divide that 2,000 by 50 weeks roughly, and you're talking about 40 invitations a week on average. That seems like a hefty number, but it can be done. And I will share with you about that before I conclude this Rainer report. So the most effective churches are seeking to have annual invitations equal to 10 times the average worship attendance. Inevitably, one of you is going to ask that question. Where did you get that statistic? It is not a hard data statistic. It is not something that I can, re that I can go back to some research and say this is hard evidence. It is anecdotal. It is information that I'm getting from churches about the, the way that they see the more they have people inviting, the more people will actually come. And, and so some of them have told me, boy, it really began, the corner really began to turn when we were seeing as much as 10 times our average worship attendance and invitations. There's nothing hard and fast about this. If you do five times, that's great. If you do 12 times, that's better. So don't, 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 don't try to pin me down to the precision of this, but really the reality is many churches are headed in this direction, 10 times the average worship attendance. So what does that mean? If you're leading a church with an average attendance of 300, 3,000 invitations a week. Over the course, that would mean roughly about six, I'm sorry, 3,000 invitations a year. Over the course of a year, that would mean about 60 invitations a week. Okay? Let me make one other point, and then I'll kind of wrap this up with a how behind it. What we're doing is we're moving from lag metrics to lead metrics. A lag metric is the result. Your attendance is a result. Your budget is a result. A lead metric are things that you measure in order to get the results. And again, I know that this can seem overly numerically focused. I understand that. But let me just simply say, this type of accountability engenders effectiveness. Now, here's the question. Can you really count lead metrics? Well, it's not always possible in every church to be able to count the number of invitations. Now, here, here's, here's what I have seen that has happened in some churches. They've taken a period, say three months, and they've asked each of their community groups to have so many invitations, and they just ask them to report the number of invitations per week. They didn't keep it as a constant thing because they didn't want it another numerical burden or focus. But they did it for a quarter or maybe for six months just to get those lag metrics out. Okay, let's, let's, let's go to this. It's one thing to get them reported to see if it's going to happen, and I gave you one example by making it short term. But here's another one. How do you really have that many invitations? Let's go back to the church of 200, okay? That's a larger church because the median average worship attendance in the U.S. is 85, so this would be a larger church of 200. Let's, let's play with the numbers just a little bit. 200 times 10 means 2,000 invitations a year. 2,000 invitations a year divided by roughly 50 weeks means 40 invitations. So what are you doing? You're going to, let's, let's, let's say that you go to your community groups and, and you have 100 in community groups. What you're doing is you're asking everybody in that community group to make one invitation that week. Email, Twitter, Facebook, telephone, in person, and just come back and say, I made my invitation this week. If, if, if 100 do it, it'll be exciting. But if fewer than half do it, say 40, consistently every week, you will have hit that goal of 2,000 invitations. When you break it down point by point, person by person, group by group, it is not that difficult. At the very least, even if you aren't measuring it, if you're uncomfortable with this idea of keeping track of lead metrics, if you're uncomfortable, at least emphasize it. What are you groups doing each and every week in order to get more people into church. Here's what I'm doing in my community group that I am a part of. One of the joys I have is uh, I, I, I basically decline all weekend invitations so I can be a part of a local church. And I'm leading a community group, and what we're doing is we're asking our members every week to invite one person. And we're just keeping track of how many we're inviting, not for bragging rights or not for some type of measurement that will hold up as holy and high, 
but just simply because we want to see the results that God will give us. So here is what I say on this Rainer Report. There's a healthy relationship between inviting one-on-one and the church health. And there's a way that you can do it, and it's possible. And I hope that these suggestions have been helpful. Thank you for being with me on Rainer Report. Continue to join me each time that we share this information about the community, culture, church, and church leadership. And I'll see you in the next edition of the Rainer Report.